Hey guys, so we made it up to Wapakoneta, Ohio, and we are at the home of Flex Arm. Really cool to be up here. This is the first time I've ever been up this far in the country, actually. And the first, this is my first time in this area of Ohio. And what brings me up here to uh, Flex Arm is that, you know, I've been I've been establishing a relationship with Flex Arm for quite some time. The, uh, the first time that I ever met the guys for Flex Arm was a while back whenever I visited them at the uh, NYC CNC open house at John Saunders uh, at his machine shop. And then uh, a while back whenever we went to the, uh, the Fabtech show in Atlanta, I saw uh, Steven Barga there and we talked. He, I had him on video, you know, and we've been, we've been keeping in communication since then. And I've had a lot of interest in getting one of their flex arms for my shop. So we've been staying in touch and talking about adding one of their products to my shop. And so we're gonna make that happen. And I decided to pick up one of their machines and that's why we come up here. Steven asked and instead of shipping that machine down to my shop, he invited me up here to see their brand new facility. This is brand new. They've only been here for four weeks. So they're still kind of uh, just now moving in and uh, getting everything situated. But uh, he, he invited me to come up, uh, bring the camera, bring the viewers, and uh, let everybody kind of see the new facility. And uh, just let me come in and see what they do here. They've got, they've got a full CNC machine shop here where they manufacture their their flex arms. They've also got the CNC flex line in there where they actually uh, sell CNC machines. So that's pretty exciting. And it's just a really cool facility here. Plus, it's a neat town. We uh, we come in here to uh, yesterday. We got we got Abby here with us. Assistant. Yep, lovely assistant. She's going to be getting some photos for us and uh, just helping us out. But we got in yesterday, and uh, Stephen and Jordan, you you guys will get to meet them. Uh, they met us here, and we got to walk around and see the shop a little bit. But they took us in into the, the downtown and uh, and uh, fed us dinner and uh, showed us around. Just a neat little place. Uh, it's just so nice up here. These uh, these little midwestern towns it's just so beautiful and as this whole area right right through here is uh, full of uh, industry and uh you know commercial and it's just beautiful it's really pretty up here plus look how pretty that building is it's a beautiful building so <laughs> abby loves it i love it this is kind of what we dream of i know this is uh, this is an industrial right here but we would really love for our future home to kind of look like this right here yes. a mixture of that you know the uh, barnuminium style that looks like that is what we would love and of course out back the shop that's what i want and wait till you see the shop it's beautiful they got the bridge crane in there they got everything so let's go inside and meet the fellas and then we're going to take a little tour of the shop and we're going to get to see my new machine and then later on we're going to load it up, get it in the truck and uh, then we'll start our trek back home later. All right. There he is. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Stephen Barga. Happy. Hi. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, we tried. We tried to uh, get somebody to buzz us in, and nobody answered. Well, you're here a little bit early, so <laughs> it, usually, look. usually about 8 a.m. Everybody's rolling in, so yeah. yeah. Welcome to uh, to Flex Arm. Welcome to Wapakoneta, man. Oh yeah, man, it's awesome. Look at this place. So we're about four weeks into uh, into this facility right here. Brand new build on the facility. Um, if you guys want to come with me, I'll, I'll walk you around. Okay. So we'll cruise down this way. Uh, basically, got a coat closet here, uh, nursing room. Um, into our training facilities. So this is our training room right here. We got it set up for all of our Flex CNC new customers to come in, uh, distributors coming in here. We basically run all of our training seminars for the machinery in here and uh, and sales. Yeah, this is nice, man. Love all the windows. So this is another one of our conference rooms here. This is where we typically hold. Um, all of our sales meetings in here, hold our financial meetings in here, uh, do a lot of interviewing in here with new salespeople, new machinists, everything along those lines. Okay. So we'll cruise back around and go over to the sales and marketing team. So this is kind of the heart of Flex Arm here. Um, Nick just left the gym, so he was upstairs earlier and uh, he, was putting in, he was putting in some work. How you doing? <laughs> I, I just got played. <laughs> So getting, a, keep, get, keep, getting his own flex arms on. We, yeah, we keep flex arm running, <laughs> uh, running pretty smooth. So this is our sales and marketing team on this side of the building here. Um, so basically all of our marketing guys 
ran down through here between okay. uh, Jordan and Isaac and Tiffany, and they're the ones that are uh, behind the scenes on everything. Morning. Morning. We come to all of our web development, social media marketing, all of our YouTube videos. Um, Isaac shoots everything. Jordan okay. directs everything, and fortunately, I get to star in everything. Yeah, I've seen you in some of the videos. Yeah, so on the too. so y'all get to y'all get to do all the YouTube videos, and uh, y'all do the Instagram videos as well. Cool. This is Joe. Joe's our service manager. Morning. Looks like you guys are planning ahead to have some more. Uh, Stations here for some for some folks. Yeah, we are, and that's the goal is to really build the inside sales staff. Um, once we start to build our distribution network, and once we really start to build the outside sales, the main goal is to really build that support system inside sales. Uh, it takes us over to our engineering service and admin, Kyler, one of our lead engineers that we have. Um, he's Morning. the guy behind all the design on the custom end effectors for torque reaction arms and part manipulators. So. Tyler does a really good job. And then you got Fred and Aaron over there. Pro Good morning, guys. Machinists. So these guys are pretty smooth. Megan in the far corner coming in early. Megan handles our accounts receivable, so she's the one that's beating everybody's phone up when they don't pay their bills. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then Eric over here is, uh, man, you talk about just wearing a million hats. This guy programming is ridiculous can write code yeah can pretty much make that machine do anything you want it to do if you need a new option on there or, he's, a, he's a sharp guy so nice we'll cruise out to the shop here okay all right so we're going out here to the uh we're going out to the warehouse and the machine shop and let me just uh let's just get a little shot right here for everybody looking out obviously you can see over here we got our bridge crane and we're going to have some cnc stuff going on over there that we'll take a look at so what and we'll do is we'll walk around this way and i'll get you a better shot we'll actually walk up on the mezzanine okay um you'll get a nice overhead shot in that case and then you'll be able to see our uh you'll be able to see our gym that we had put in so we've got a 160 flag up here special operations aviation regiment so we do got a couple veterans um one cool thing about Flex Arm is we are veteran-owned, veteran-employed. Uh, Nick and I both Army veterans, and this kind of brings you into what our morning routine is. A lot of us guys will get in here at 5 a.m., uh, 6 a.m. What we'll do is we've got a trainer that comes in once a week. We work with the trainer once a week, and we really knock it out trying to keep that healthy lifestyle and, and like you said earlier, getting our own personal Flex Arm on. Uh -huh, yeah. <laughs> so this is a pretty good view of, uh, of everything out here. Man, this is nice. So how big is the warehouse here? So we got 43,000 square feet in the warehouse. Okay. Um, 12,000 square feet inside in the, uh, in the admin building. Okay. So there's their machine shop over there and we'll check that out here in a bit. All high CNC machines. There are a couple of uh, manual machines over there. I believe you got a LeBlanc blade right. over there. looks like a Bridgeport mill over there. Of course, over here we've got their CNC line. This is another product of theirs that they sell. And then, so what do, what do we have going on out here, Stephen? So right out here in the middle, so we've got our assembly station right here. So basically they're taking all the parts that come out of machining, they're assembling those flex arms so we can really maintain that three to five day lead time. Um, just a little bit further north from that, you'll see the, uh, the other little island there is our repair area uh and that's out here yeah correct okay. so tim sits in there we do all the own, or all of our own service and repair on flex arms so if you ever run into an issue where the flex arm's not working well send it into us they'll turn it around in about a week okay and then shipping and receiving at the far end down there uh we got our gal des that does a fantastic job getting everything banded up packaged up to ship out okay and then over here, obviously you see a lot of things on the ground. Yeah. Um, right now, that's our sub assembly station. Uh, what we're trying to do is get all of our shelving and all of our racking built in. Mm -hmm. Moving 43,000 square feet of a manufacturing facility does not happen overnight. So it's something that we've been struggling to get done while still maintaining uh, production. production. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. cause I, I just mentioned coming in, I believe this is y'all's fourth week. Correct. Here into the new facility, so. Uh, they moved they were just around the corner they had a building around there so 
you guys are just trying to get your bulk shelving moved into here exactly yeah. so okay. i saw on instagram a lot of guys were complimenting on the floor yes so the uh look at the, the floor, beautiful floors <laughs> yeah so we actually had to buy a zamboni and you see the guys yeah. sitting over there so yeah i see it right there the floor cleaner once a day these guys all draw a straw and the low man on the totem pole <laughs> takes the uh takes the zamboni for uh for a rip around the shop and I've yet to drive it. I, I really want to. Maybe today's my day. You haven't pulled the straw yet. I have not pulled that straw. Oh wow! Yet. You got to get out there on it. That, we need a uh, we need a YouTube video of that. Oh, man, they keep me inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, the less I'm out here, the better off they are. This is definitely a beautiful shop. So uh, as I as I say, you know, pride in ownership. So you know, keep them floors clean, and you you've already you know I, I showed you know pictures of the shop, and you guys were complimenting the floors. So you know, keeping everything clean you, let's you take guys, a walk down yeah we'll take a look at it so yeah that's a nice workout area this is cool so rogue fitness rogue fitness is a is an ohio based company uh so they're an ohio based fabricator out of uh out of columbus ohio so it's something that we try to support as well is local industry and in the crossfit game rogue fitness is the top of the game so of course, we want to work with those guys and, and get the best of the best in here. Okay. I see a nice tool crib area over here as well. Yeah, it's a brand new tool crib got put in last week. Um, just make sure we police everything as far as it's concerned and, and everything's got a nice little hole in there. So getting into our, uh, getting into our machining uh, area, uh, the machine shop itself, you know, a bunch of, or a couple vertical uh, house machines. BMCs, and then we've got three five-axis machines that we're super proud of. Uh, these machines right here are really dedicated to our custom fixturing when it comes to torque reaction arms. They're doing a lot of the tapping components on there as well, and uh, and the operators that we have are just phenomenal that are running these. How many machinists do you have here? Uh, we've got five machinists total right now. Um, two guys, two other guys on top of that that kind of. Uh, they're a little hybrid between machinists and programmers, so they come out periodically and, uh, and they'll run some parts as well. Okay. Well, let's uh, let's talk about some of the machines that you have, and let's uh, let's discuss what it is that you build here. So, uh, I, I understand that you you build you build everything in house, right? We we do. So aside from the castings and the powder coating, obviously on the flex arms, we're building everything in house. Okay. Um, when it comes to the, and I'll see if I can find one and we'll kind of touch back on it. But when it comes to the mounting basis for these, we're actually turning the pin in there. Uh, we're, we're sawing the pin down, we're turning the pin to size and we're truing it up to make sure it mounts seamlessly to these carts. And we maintain that, uh, that tolerance that, you know, plus or minus two thou tolerance coming out of a flex arm. Okay. So these are the carts that we offer as well. Yeah. Um, we don't manufacture the actual base of the cart. It's a local company called Teeman. Okay. Uh, Teeman's about 20 miles down the road from us and those guys are really big into truck lifts. So they're making the lifts on there, huge fabrication industry and they do a phenomenal job when it comes to the cart bases. Uh, we do machine the tops on here. So we do all the holes in there, all the fixture holes in the top of the card. I think there's 209 half 13 fixture holes to make fixturing super easy. If you want to throw a curved vise on there, if you want to throw a set of toe clamps on there, it makes it really nice. Right. Very cool. So I wish I, I wish we had a couple guys out here running because right now I know it looks it looks yeah. dead. Well, it's just really early. It's only about 7:30 right now. Because this place is typically kicking during the day. It's like a beehive, you know. You yeah. uh, from the outside, not a whole lot going on, and as soon as you hit inside, man, yeah. it's 100 mile an hour. So yeah, the guys uh, the guys do a really good job. This is an example of a print right here uh, that we got in for a custom mount. So. They got a custom fixed mount that they want to go in there. What that's going to do is there's going to be an end cap that goes on the end of that. It's going to be a clamshell style. Mm -hmm. And what it's going to do is basically just hold a torque, uh, torque tool. Um, so a DC tool is going to go in there and, and the flex arm is going to basically take up all of the torque reaction and counterbalance it. Okay. So a couple little nice brackets on there too. Well, I know you mentioned this to me yesterday, the UMC 1000. Why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about this machine? So the UMC 1000 is Haas's new five axis machine. Um, we are the first ones in Ohio to have this machine in, in production. Um, and I believe the second one in the US to have this machine in production. 
uh, it was one of those things that we had an opportunity to get it in here and, yeah. and man we jumped on it and you <laughs> talk about a cool cool machine um, I, I can't turn it on kind of like you but I'll tell you what <laughs> watching the uh, watching the machinists run it and the guys yeah. that are experts at it man they're, they're yeah. phenomenal now with it you got the UMC 750s over here so is this just a larger capacity than Correct. the than the 750 yeah so larger capacity uh spindle's gonna have more capacity on it in that case and then the table itself is gonna have more capacity as well okay well maybe later on we'll we'll get to see one of these guys making some chips oh yeah definitely man we'll, yeah. we'll see it throwing some chips yeah and then bringing you over to to your neck of the woods man this is a manuals. yeah i'm a little more um familiar with this stuff look you got some parts down here it looks like something i would have made right here yeah so we uh we do run these machines still um a lot of our new machinists that come in this is the first thing that we put them on yeah. um we think it's very important to understand getting away from only modern machinery and actually having the ability to run manual machinery and getting in here on these guys and god forbid something ever happens and that house goes down what do you do yeah um you know you got to come over here and you got to put some elbow grease into it and get back to the basics yeah cool you got the bridgeport series two and then we've got us a leblon looks like around maybe a 15 inch swing So we had About a straggler a, float up. We got Chuck here, one of our <laughs> one of our lead machinists came in Chuck? a little bit early. Hello. Hey, nice to meet you. Good morning. Nice you got a little filming going on too, huh? <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what cool. we're gonna do is we'll we'll keep cruising here on the tour. Yeah, let's uh let's while we were on the machines, let's go ahead and uh talk about the rest of the CNC machines. Yeah, perfect. And so, uh let let everybody see what you got here. We're kind of at a flex arm 2.0 right now. So Nick Kennedy took the company over in 2014 from his grandfather. His okay. grandfather passed away, and uh, and Nick took the company over. Nick's a younger guy, sorry. Nick's a younger guy, and uh, and a lot of the machining that we had was being farmed out. So in 2014, we started with the TM3. Okay. This was the first CNC that we had brought in here. Uh, started with the TM3, started with the small lathe as well, and uh, and then from there continued to build up. One thing that we noticed is every machine that we've bought, the first thing that came about was it didn't have the bed space that we need. Um, we were always limited on space with the small TM3 all the way to the VF6. As soon as the VF6 got delivered, we wish we would have went with the VF12. Really? So that'll that'll come up later in the in the segment on the CNC. Okay. So this is the VF6. So this is the VF6. Uh, Chuck's, Chuck's baby for a long time here. Um, the guy can operate this thing and crash it like nobody else. <laughs> I've never crashed. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got a couple more on the other side. We do. Tim, let's, yeah. uh, let's check those out and, and uh, see what else you got going on here. So to complement the TM3, we went to the ST10. Um, so the TM3 came in first, and then we rolled in with the ST10. The ST10, kind of getting back to those pins that I was talking about, on the mounting flange. Yep. So these are some of the parts that we're running on these ST3s, and then the DS30. Okay. Um, so that's we'll, your other lay there. Correct, that's our other lay there. Uh, it does have the Haas bar feeder on there, and we've got live tooling as well on that machine. So, okay. really nice machine, but what, what this is right here is one of the mounting flanges for the flex arm. And you'll kind of see it here, an idea. So basically, coming out of raw casting right here, going into machining, and then final product is gonna come down here on this guy. Okay. Now, we do use our flex arms in-house, so it's a question that we get often. How are you guys tapping holes? Uh -huh. uh, we do tap in-house, and I'll tell you, we do tap in the CNC from time to time. If it makes sense, we're gonna tap in the CNC, but if it makes sense to take it out, cut down on that cycle time, or the machine just doesn't have the capacity to tap or thread milling is just going to take entirely too long yeah. we will fixture it up and we have a plethora of cncs that these guys offer uh flex arms that these guys operate yeah i see a few floating around here so we have yet to even talk about in the in the video what it is that 
that I'm taking home though. So I just I wanted to point out to one of the one of the machines that this is this is what flex arm builds you know for the guys watching and uh, this this is not the model that that i'm picking up but this is this, this is, is a baby what compared to what you're picking right up, right right <laughs> we went we decided to go with the uh the big boy model so this is a baby and even with it being a baby this thing still has a seven eight tap capacity on there mild steel two speed gearbox tap lubrication yeah. system built directly into it and then you've got that flex arm signature clutching collet um, that when you hit the bottom of the hole, you're going to save on tap breakage and this thing's going to clutch out. That's going to be so cool to use, man. I'm excited to get it hooked up and so you're running. you're the raw castings that come out on these guys for the okay. mounting flange. So just to give you an idea. So can I ask you, um, are these made in Ohio? Uh, they are actually. So Samcast is a company out of Ohio um, that's a local casting facility. So we're big on Ohio made, obviously big on made in America but even bigger on Ohio Maine. Um, what we want to do is supplement the local economy as much as possible um, and really maintain that quality control. Um, if it's a casting division that's really close to us, we can go over there if, if we ever run into a quality issue and fix it quick and fast. Um, okay. Casting offshore and getting things done overseas it isn't as easy. My, my Mandarin's not as good as yours, maybe. I've heard of some problems you know, dealing with offshore and the time it takes to get it corrected and especially when you get a batch of product in and it's and it's incorrect yeah, i'll so, tell you a 30 minute drive is a hell of a lot easier than a yeah. 18 hour flight yeah that's great to hear that you keep the uh keep the work close to you keep it uh local keep it in ohio but you know just driving up here we saw a lot of industry places like this mm -hmm. you know we saw some foundries and casting places so us being located right on Interstate 75 in Ohio gives us the ability to hit that rust belt from top to bottom. Uh, we basically mm -hmm. got Atlanta, Georgia that we're supplying Atlanta, Georgia all the way up through Canada. Um, yeah. And it's it's a quick shot for us to go up there and, uh, and really hit all this customer base, talk to all these guys and provide a solution for them. Cool. So we'll put this over this way. Okay. So this is another company that we partnered up with, which is pretty neat. Another Ohio-based company, uh, Ready Robotics. So what these guys are doing is robotic in integration on material handling and basically tending to machines. Um, so these guys were the first ones to successfully take a universal robot and have it operate a flex arm tapping arm. Really? So they took our small little pneumatic tapping arm, they put a UR robot on there, and had this thing operating a flex arm to the point where we were interested in it because it's just it's super neat man <laughs> this is their saw in the apartment back here yeah so this is all of our raw stock our saw department we got a bender over here that we do some uh, custom work with So he's running the DS30, probably one of our favorite blades that we have. But now he's turning the the uh, base plates there. Correct. So this base plate right here is for the S36 and the M60 tapping arm and torque reaction arm. So that gives you kind of an idea of a print. And there's our final product starting from the raw casting. Okay. So we're just facing the end, turning it, and facing this shoulder right here. And we're we're also adding that hole in there. Oh, okay, putting the center hole. Yep. So we're adding yep. the center hole in there. Nate, are you tapping that hole after the fact? Yeah. How are you tapping that hole? Tapping it right over here. Oh, I see you're doing this side first there, right? Yep. Okay. Facing it, turning the OD, and then you flip it around. Yep. Okay. And how are you tapping that hole? Flex on right over here. Oh. Oh. Can we see that in action? Yeah. 
So blind hole, you heard that clutch engage at the bottom of the hole, saved on that tap breakage, and uh, basically about four or five seconds in and out. Uh, super easy. So that's a 3818. Three Very six. cool. Just effortlessly move that sucker around. Fresh out of his senior year in high school. Yeah. Going into college, going up to Bowling Green State University. And uh, and he's out here for some summer help. So we got him over here pushing some buttons on machines and uh, nice. and getting her knocked out. These are the parts you're making right here? Yep. Looks like you've been doing the champers there. The better look at the part that he's been machining. Is that what we're making? That's what we're making right here. Just basically running that chamfer along the top, running that bevel along the top. So this would, in my world, this would typically be a, a lathe job right here. <laughs> so the five axis gives us the capability of hitting these flats on here, rotating around, basically hitting all the sides on this part that needs machined out. Yeah. So this is another uh, another part for a torque reaction arm that we have, one of our LR or AR series arms. It rides up and down a shaft on there, reacts the torque, counterbalances the torque. There's milling the flat now. Is this the part that you're machining here? Oh no, I made this and I'm just making the cap. Oh, okay. Making the cap for it? Yeah. Okay. So, getting over here, like we saw from the top, this is a lot of our uh, sub-assemblies that we have pre-built up, ready to go. Um, at our old facility, we basically had guardrails running all the way down the, the length of the shop with upright posts on there, and these arms were hanging off the side, ready to go, ready for final assembly. So again, we can maintain that three to five day lead time. Um, okay. That's something that, that we're really, really passionate about, is making sure we have a quick turnaround time for the end user and they can get that solution in and, and start saving time and money. So this is one of our assembly stations over here. You'll see some guys here in a bit getting in and, uh, and really knocking out some assembly on the flex arms. So this is getting a little bit closer to the size that you have. Right, yeah, this is stepping it up a bit. Still a, uh, still a baby <laughs> compared to what you have. I think right here we got a GHM 30, so things got an inch and a quarter tap capacity on there, electric over hydraulic tapping arm, and uh, and again, man, it's 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 the baby <laughs> brother compared to what you're getting. 
Why don't you tell them the uh, the model that that I'm getting? So the model that you're picking up is the GHM60. So it's got a two inch tap capacity on there, electric over hydraulic, variable RPM, and uh, generates 811 foot pounds of torque. So. And I, don't, I don't foresee you running out of capacity anytime <laughs> soon. What's the tap capacity on it? So it's a quarter inch to two inch. To up to two up inch. Up to two inch. And that's why we had opted to uh, go. You know, we started talking about a tapping arm, and and uh, Stephen was real quick. You're a bomb. You got to go with the. We got to get you out of those big tap wrenches and go with the uh, the big monster flex arm, so that. So we're we gonna can take those, those six foot tap wrenches and they're going to be wall hangers. They're yeah. going to hang above Abby's <laughs> fireplace. Is what they're going to do. <laughs> it's going to be it's going to be great getting it mounted in there and and uh, putting this thing to use. I've got some jobs for it. This is cool. I like the table too. You so guys, the table's super old school. Yeah. Um, Gosh, I think we've had that since uh, since probably the 70s. Yeah. Um, super old school table. We've replaced the top on it a few times. Blanchard ground just to ensure you know we got that accuracy on there. I'm excited. I'm excited about mine. So some of the uh, some of the components that go into the hydraulics right here. So for everybody that knows, we do stock a hundred percent of all spare parts for the flex arms. Okay. So if there's ever an issue with flex arm, don't ever worry about us not having anything in stock or ready to go for a quick turnaround time on repair. Okay. So some of our stock shelving on the, uh, on the carts and then stock shelving for the power packs uh, coming out of the big hydraulic units. Now your baby's sitting over here ready to go with Booth Machine Shop. All right. So, on it. So here's so here's my unit. Packaged up, ready to go. This is it right here. And look at that monster. That is cool. And then this is going to be the hydraulic unit right here. That is correct. Yeah, that's a hydraulic power pack. The one we opted with for you is uh, is 483 phase. So you're going to have to get a, a little boost transformer on there to bump her up a little bit from your 208. Correct. We'll have to do a transformer. So we'll be working on that once we get back to the shop. So getting into the uh, into the shipping part, like I said, this is where Des gets everything packaged up, make sure everything's ready to go. Um, no issues on the arms as far as they're concerned going through transit. These things ship worldwide. So we may have something going over to Europe. We may have something going to Asia. We may have something going to Jackson Center, Ohio, the home of uh, Airstream Trailers. Okay. So this is my favorite part of the shop. This is the Flex CNC. Uh, Flex CNC is a brand new product for us. Large open bed vertical machining center. Uh, Flex CNC really bridges that gap between the chip industry and the fab industry. Guys that are doing really big parts, guys that want to run multiple setups on one machine bed, and uh and really knock it out quick and fast is that uh eight, that's our 8 a.m tugboat oh, okay that's time to get started huh that's a fact okay so some of the customers that we work with on the cnc are uh obviously structural steel guys yeah. uh, with the i beams that's a new product that we're launching right now is flex beam um, this thing is 100 percent dedicated to i beams very similar to a couple other uh, machines out in the industry right now and and the dedication on this thing to i-beams is is crazy it's got a huge capacity on it it's super fast it's got a monstrous tool changer on it and uh and it's a 40 foot long machine and is this that's this guy right here which one are we no no we don't even have this one in oh, yet. okay this okay. one's still uh this one's still in the works of r d and getting done so we're we're not going to bring that one out yet so it's going to be dedicated to putting holes in the in the I beams. Correct, right in the webbing okay. I beams. A hundred percent dedicated to I beams on that. All right. So that's going to be flex beam. Uh, getting into the CNCs right now, the the two versions that we offer, we offer a C series, which is going to be this guy on the left. That's a cantilevered series. Okay. So basically, double hung in the back, two foot Y axis on there, and then we got the G series. So the G series, and this is one of our demo machines that we run production on and do training on. So the G series machine is a large gantry machine, four foot, six foot, eight foot, 10 foot Y axis on this. Both machines can go up to 50 feet on the X axis in length. Wow. Uh, cool thing about the G series is 
for the z-axis on there for the height we can actually go to 48 inches so you could put a 48 inch part in there fully mm -hmm. machine it that gives you a lot of workpiece capability in there oh, man it's, it's a ton of flexibility um like i said some of the customers we work with really heavy fabricators um, guys that are doing scissor lifts guys that are in the agricultural industry or in the construction industry building big equipment this is a good look at the gantry uh, not the gantry i'm sorry the uh, cantilever style so the, the machines are are a huge weldment correct you can see it's it's a fabricated steel weldment and you can see the webbing in here for the cantilever style arm so huge weldment on the machine that's the way that we keep costs down um, one of the cool things that we do is when we get the machine set into the customers you'll see the rails up here on the top yeah so just standard t-slot rails on here for fixturing what we do is we actually take the spindle itself and we machine those rails down so they'll run a, a face mill all the way across and make sure we maintain that perpendicularity all the way down or maintain that tolerance so you'll get the machine install it at the customer's facility mm -hmm. get it level and then machine the rails so where it is it is perfect correct and uh, all of your your sub plates all of your fixture plates your vices all will mount right here on these rails yep correct we've got airlines that run through these machines as well i don't know if they have yeah they got these plumbed in already okay. so we do got airlines that that plumb in through the machine so if you wanted to do some sort of pneumatic fixturing or you wanted to do some pneumatic vicing you can get that going it is plumbed up and it's ready to go okay. simple end code in that case or manual well look at look at the capacity of, look how big this is and you could take a large workpiece let's say a um a lot of guys know that I work on large shafts. Right. So if I had a large gearbox shaft or just a large shaft that's got multiple keyways milled down it, we could set that in this machine right here, right? Yeah, and with a single pass. Right. So you'd have uh, several vices mounted up in this machine, and you could just do all those keyways in one setup. So we got a current customer right now that has a 30-foot machine, and they're running a 25-foot shaft in there, 25-foot hardened shaft, doing a three-quarter by three-quarter keyway in a single pass. And they basically got 25 Kurt double vices self-centering yeah. set on this thing. They drop their shaft in, they lock them in, and uh, and they just let her let her eat. That is cool. I like that, man. I, I wasn't aware of this uh, capability until I saw it, and it's just it's so very it's a, exciting to it's see a newer that. Newer product for us. We're only about two years into this product right now. Uh, manufacturing is being done in Spain on the product. It's it's a partner company of ours. Uh -huh. um, so we're going to maintain to keep the manufacturing done in Spain. We we can control the quality in that case because it is a partner facility, and uh, and these guys just do a bang up job on the machines. Okay. You were uh, you were mentioning too that another another cool aspect of a machine with this size bed is that you know you could have you could have multiple workstations all along here. Correct. You could have a bunch of vices, a bunch of sub plates, and just have a bunch of different workstations all along here. So the cool thing about these machines really comes into this small little laser sensor right here. So this little laser sensor right here from Omrod casts a three foot radius around the spindle of the machine. So as long as I'm outside of that three foot radius, I've got full access to the bed while that spindle's turning. Okay. So the main goal on this machine is 100% spindle uptime. If you're setting up stations, say two stations on this machine, station one goes 10 feet, station two goes 10 feet. While the spindle's down here turning and operating on this machine, I've got a guy down here setting up fixtures, doing setups, removing parts off, and as soon as he spins back around, we call that pendulum mode, and he just bounces side to side like ping pong ball, yeah. and uh, and that spindle keeps turning. That is cool. So here's another style over here of the uh, of the same kind of lasers. These guys are doing final final assembly on these machines. Right, they're over here working on them. So another style of the lasers is this one right here actually casts a wall. So you're going to have a beam going side to side on that. And then this is going to be my open spot for the bed. If I break that beam at any given time, it's going to stop the process, shut the spindle down just to ensure safety. Okay. So the back side of the TRD machines, they're safeguarded as well. You'll see two big vertical lasers running side to side on that. So if you do have the machine out in an open area of the shop, 
you don't ever have to worry about somebody trying to access the back side of the machine because as soon as they break this light curtain right here again the machine's going to stop um operator's going to get alerted that's this guy right here correct okay so you'll see it matches down there at the other end yeah and that's going to cast a light curtain from eight inches off the ground all the way up to i don't know about five six so i'd call it six foot uh-huh So all these guys right here, so this is a twin set of machines that are going to go up to, uh, I believe, up to Canada. These two guys right here. So yeah, okay. these two guys right here going up to Canada. And then you'll see on some of these tags, it'll say available for sale. They haven't changed them because yesterday we ended up closing out on this guy. We ended up closing out on this guy. And then this one's going to go to one of our dealers. Um, so it's going to be a stock machine for one of our dealers that they're going to get in. And, uh, and they're going to be able to run demos at their facility. Okay. So we do have these machines placed throughout the U.S. strategically at different dealers. Uh, we also have these machines running manufacturing all over the U.S., Canada, Mexico, and uh, in Europe. There's 600 machines. So worldwide, we're, we're upwards of about 800 machines right now that are, that are running. Um, our main goal is to not sell 1,200 machines a month like Haas does. The main goal is really find that niche market that these machines fit into and provide a really good solution for them. Well, we'd be able to see these at, say, IMTS show? Uh, more of the fab shows. The fab so, shows, okay. Yeah, we do fab tech shows with these machines. IMTS, not so much. Um, and the only reason is, is it's just so overran with machinery at IMTS. And number okay. two, you can't find booth space right now. Okay. So we've got a 10 by 20 booth at IMTS and, and trying to find a bigger space right now. Uh, we're 10 years out. Okay. So it's so, so the FabTech, we'll, we'll be able to see the FabTech then. Okay. FabTech shows, we're going to have all these guys. The South Tech shows, we're going to have these. Uh, West Tech, we're not going to do this year. Um, but at all the tech shows and all the Fab shows, we'll have them. So this is our Frankenstein machine. Uh, this is the machine that Eric, our, our programmer, our coder, gets in here and he plays with all day, every day. Look how, look how big it is. So this is our high output G series machine. Uh, spindle RPM on this is 4,000 RPM. It's a Cat 50 spindle, and it does have the ZF gearbox in there. So it's going to generate 368 foot pounds of torque. Um, we've had OSG come in, Allied come in, Kinemetal come in, and we do a lot of testing with their tools on this machine because it generates so much torque that they just want to see what the capabilities of their tools are. Okay. And uh, I'll tell you what those guys all three of those companies make our machine look way better than what it really is <laughs> man they make some awesome tools good there's some example of the uh, you know the t-nuts in place there's a big two two four six block another little fixture plate or a sub plate right there mini pallet let's come down here and check out this end is this another piece that goes to it so this is one of the fixtures um, for one of the end users that we have we're going to do some runoffs on there so what these guys are doing are weight plates so think of a think of a weight machine that you know you got your pull down lats these are the weight plates that go on so a weight plate will fix in here here and here and you've got four-sided machining in this case so what we'll do is there's our fourth axis rotary right there yeah so with that fourth axis being the a axis we'll be able to hook this thing directly in and it plums directly into that fourth axis and we're going to be able to rotate and do full four-sided machining on there wow so the machine that these guys have they run dual fourth axis on the machine so you've got one at the left side you've got one at the right side and they're running that pendulum mode side to side wow once the uh once the job's done on on zone a they're going to move down to b so one two three four so they're running what 16 16, 16 parts per per side Correct. That is cool. I just think that's crazy capabilities, man. So here's an example of one of the shafts that a customer sent in to us to do some machining on. Yeah. And they're going to keyway this shaft right here. So I think we got a 10 inch hardened shaft and we're going to run some keyways on this guy. Okay. What machine will you do that over here? So we're going to do that on this G series machine with the cap right. 50 high output spindle on there. All right. Um, just because man, it's, it's going to take a lot. Cool. 
Well, I look forward to seeing that. I want to. I want to see some machining on these guys. It's very interesting. Well, that about wraps um, it up for the uh, for the shop, so we can finish the the walkthrough inside. And okay. I do want to real quick before we walk inside. Yeah. Just, uh, I just want to point out, you know how beautiful the building looks. I want to point out the 15-ton uh, bridge crane. That's obviously what they use to pick up the machines here, and. You know, I dream of having a setup like this one of these days in, in my own my own shop, but you guys are doing awesome things here, you know, seeing the growth and beautiful building. It looks great out here. Just Thanks. love it. This is actually, I lied earlier, this is my favorite part of Flexor. <laughs> um, this is our studio. Oh, look at this, man. So, we got the green screen in here. Yeah, so this is our studio. This is where we do a lot of the demonstrations on the arms. This is where we run all of our ads. Um, the green screen is something new to me, yeah. so the first time I got in front of it, I, I was a bit intimidated, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. Um, I do a lot of videos for them, but still, there's, there's just something about not seeing, you know, what you're doing. Yeah. Uh, but it's always been a goal in my life to, uh, to be a weatherman, so they're the <laughs> only guys that can mess up their job constantly and maintain. <laughs> this is great. So I guess we're going to be in here later doing a little question and answer together, aren't we? We are, yeah. We're going to be yeah. sitting in these chairs. We're going to get close, buddy. Yeah, yeah. we're going to get in here. He asked if I would get behind the camera with him and uh, do a little Q&A with him. So that's going to be something, I believe, that's going to be for Flex Arms channel, That's right? correct, yeah. 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 So, so you'll have to go check that out. All right, man. Well, that's uh, that's pretty much us. We'll we'll end it here. And okay. Again, I thank you, well, and we'll load that thing up. All right. Well, um, look, I appreciate the tour and uh, showing everybody you know the facility here and biting us in this was uh, awesome to be able to come up here and see the place and see the machine shop the manufacturing and and hearing about the uh, you know keeping everything local and right. ohio and made in america so it was really great i really wanted to take the opportunity to come up here meet you guys meet everybody you know i know i met you before mm -hmm. but and uh, see the new shop you know see how it's done it's just that was a lot more fun than just saying, well, just stick it on a truck and ship it down here. Right, right. So that's why we took that opportunity to just come up here and meet you guys and see the new shop. Good, man. So Thanks again. All right, man. Appreciate it, brother. But we'll go get this thing loaded up, all right? You guys are getting it set up to do our demo here. Getting a uh, Kurt Vice bolted down to one of their tables. This is your test blocks here, right? Correct. This is what you use like in the trade shows? Yep, that's exactly right. Okay, cool. So we actually machine these blocks in-house as well. So okay. So we'll get raw stock in here, we'll cut down the size. I'll take it over. You run those on a CNC? On a Flex CNC. So they run it on a Flex CNC, so the big G series. Yeah. So what they'll do is they'll gang up 10, 15, 20 of them in a fixture. Yeah. And uh, it's an inch and a half hole. Yeah. Tap size hole. Tap size, correct. Yeah. What model is this This one here? So this is the GHM45. So it has that same multi-position capability that yours has, but it's only got an inch and a half capacity. So it's the baby brother of what you have. Okay. This is the this is the tap we're going to run. Correct. This AccuLube gel paste, really nice stuff. Like I said, inch and a half hole. We hit the bottom of the hole on there. I had my buttons reversed on me on that one. Oh. You want to run one? Sure. Let me get on the other side of that camera. Give me a second. Let me get a set up for it. Okay. <laughs> Just get it centered up and then hit the button. That's it. Inch and a half hole. Nothing 
to it. That is a lot easier than using those Greenfield tap wrenches. <laughs> so, is this the uh, two inch tap here? So that is the two inch tap that the unit that you have, that GHM 60, right. is gonna push. So the M, and that's always a big question that we get, what does the M indicate on there? It's actually multi-position. So this unit right here has the capability of going 90 degree, going full horizontal on there, 180 and then hitting a 45, a, a 33 and a half, you name it, you'll be able to knock it out all the way across the board. Okay. That's gonna be great having this capability if we ever need it, having that two inch tap cap capability. Yeah, it's gonna be pretty awesome. Sweet. So one thing that I did fail to mention, like in the beginning is where flex arm came from, why flex arm came about. And it's, it's a really cool story. So back in the day of, of not having CNC equipment and only having NC equipment, uh, there was no really easy way of tapping. So it wasn't just put a G-code in and let it ride. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were using bridge ports, we were using LeBons, and and, uh, and the founder of the company, Richard Kennedy, really wanted to find a way to speed up the tapping process. So he got the inspiration from a uh, an architect's lamp, um, and you kind of see the idea behind it. Yeah. And said, I'm going to mount a tool in the end of it, and we're going to tap some holes offline. So, it was built out of necessity for us specifically, and then a lot of interest kind of came about with it, and that's where local machine shops in the area said, hey, can you build me one? So we did, and then a trade show happened, and then it started to spread and spread and spread, and you know, it was 35 years ago, and- uh, That is cool. And it's, it's just, it's a fun company to be a part of. Built out of necessity and then turned into a booming business. Correct. Very cool. So this is my machine right here. They actually, they're, they're re-palletizing it for me so that we could fit everything in the bed of the truck. That was a big boy. This is the, uh, the power unit. got the machine loaded up and we are ready to roll i think we're gonna go ahead and uh start rolling back to florida now sounds good man safe man. travels yeah i appreciate it again once again thank you for having us up here and uh, i'm excited for the new machine can't wait to get it hooked up and show this thing in operation and actually make some money with it man right on it's gonna be fun so thank you, you sir thanks for the hospitality man yeah absolutely brother see All you right. man see you hope you guys enjoyed